on-premise full liquor licenses. First up, 509 Atlantic Avenue, the roulette. Intermediate, please give us your name. Roulette. Hi, my name is Sarah Scantifio. I'm here to represent Roulette Intermedium. Uh, we are a 33-year organization, nonprofit organization that is moving to Brooklyn. Uh, we will be opening in September, September 15th. Um, what our organization does is we present experimental contemporary music um, and new media arts. And uh, we have, since 1978, represented thousands of underexposed artists um, here at Roulette who have now gone on to be prominent musicians such as Philip Glass, Meredith Monk, um, and a host of other variety of different people. Uh, our endeavors have always been consistently supported by the DCA, the National Endowments of the Arts, and NISCA, as well as private foundations and individuals. Um, our mission is really to, to provide opportunities for innovative composers, musicians, sound artists, um, to present their, their work in an accessible professional productions. And we do that through offering cheap rehearsal space, high quality recording facilities. We offer commissions and residencies for artists. Um, we have a commitment to support uh, young artists, emerging artists, as well as established innovators. Um, we are, like I said, moving to Brooklyn. We are not quite in the offices yet, as the building is still under construction. But we have, our move was motivated primarily by the idea of enlarging our programming so that we can uh, allow for a, a wider range of activity, which includes musical theater, opera, um, dance, multidisciplinary work, film, um, things that would need a larger space. Um, and basically, the, having a larger space would provide more suitable resources for artists um, and to support them through our mission. Uh, this endeavor has been generously supported by the Brooklyn Borough President's Office, City Council, the YWCA, um, as well as a host of other uh, people in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. Um, we are applying for a full liquor license, uh, as you know. Uh, primarily, we will be serving beer and wine during our concerts, but because of state uh, liquor, liquor authority regulations, no two, two, uh, I'm sorry, an organization that already has a liquor license cannot, a caterer cannot apply to have a license at that, that organization. So we have to have a full license to blanket everything. That would only occur for private events that we have, um, but primarily for our concerts, we have just beer and wine. What are the closest routes of this location? It's 33rd Avenue. 33rd Avenue. Atlantic Avenue, the corner of Atlantic Avenue and 3rd Avenue. It's the YWCA. It's the YWCA. Exactly. Oh, it is the YWCA. Yes. Yes, it is. Yes. That would have been nice to add. Uh, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Du. Based upon the applicant's um, testimony to us before us tonight and on page two of three, I note the highlight in yellow where there has been nicely put in an asterisk to the right of our application questions. No bar air will be open to the general public. All alcohol service will be ancillary to performance and events. Therefore, I recommend approval. Uh, it's a little early for that, but we accept. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Whiteside. Yeah. Um, what's on the second floor? The Y is still on the second floor? The Y would be on the third floor with well, the mezzanine. The third and the first and the cell. What's on the second floor? It's a mezzanine level. We have the first floor, which is the ground floor, a mezzanine level, and then the third floor starts to the YWCA. Well, no, if it's a mezzanine, then what you're calling the third floor, the second floor. Second floor. Yeah. Party of the first part. And, and in other words, a mezzanine is not a floor. Mm -hmm. It's an inter intermediate floor. Okay, so level, yes, then floor. you are correct. Then it would be the ground floor and the mezzanine. Indeed. And then there's the sub-basement. And then the second floor. There is no second floor. Well, what you're calling the third floor here, you have a third floor. You have a first and third Who's on floor. first? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, no where is the third? Where is that noted in? I think it says here, third floor, as built plan. What is this? Can we just approve this? That would be the mezzanine. That's the mezzanine? 
second floor mezzanine? Wait for a second. Yes. Yes. Above the second floor. Above, Above the ground floor. floor. Above the ground floor. Above the, ground floor. Above Above the first floor mezzanine. It's a first floor mezzanine. Yes, if you can, exactly. If you can look at this, we're talking about this area here on the top. So we're talking about the first floor mezzanine and the second floor. That's what we're talking about. That must be it. Yes. The balcony area. Yeah, well, it has to be. No, if, if, if no, that extends over the, the first floor. floor. Yes, yeah, see that's the first there's floor. There's nothing above this floor. Exactly, there's nothing above this floor. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
we clarify that the application is for the first floor and the first floor message. Right. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Yes, thank you, John. I, I, I did, um, I guess, in the in the eyes of, of the chair, certainly, and probably in the eyes of my colleagues, uh, jump the gun when I read a recommendation, but I did not make a motion. I would like to make a motion on this okay. applicant's application, if I might. Um, I would like to make a motion that um, the executive committee recommend to the state liquor authority the approval, the recommendation of the approval of this license with the stipulation that the consumption of alcohol be in the lobby. Ms. Janet. No, I was going to. I was going to add that about the stipulation as an amendment, but now he's done it. <laughs> <laughs> Stop second. Mr. Newman. Is there I, any I way? I think we should ask for clarification. Motion yeah. is made and seconded. Can I, uh, but we are in discussion right now, Mr. Conosenti. Can I make a friendly motion that we just uh, that we review what the the state liquor authority right. 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 regulations are? Find out what right. they permit. Right. But well, then we we'll sure we'll, uh, can get that information and get it back to you. Is, is there a time frame on this, John? Uh, yes, there's always a time frame. Uh, Mr. Paris would automatically, based on the discussion that's happened here as it relates to confusion about whether patrons are permitted to carry alcohol back to the seat. Uh, that it happens doesn't mean that uh, it is right. illegal. We would automatically have to follow up. Right. So, so what's the time frame of this, I guess? Because, because if we're talking about to review um, it would have to be acted or voted on subs subsequently. No, uh, when the recommendation is made, whatever recommendation we ultimately make here, uh, the discussion of the concerns raised about uh, whether alcohol can leave the lobby area and take it to the seats will be included in that recommendation. If we don't have definitive statements about whether it is or is not permitted by that time, but we have a timeline as the executive committee knows, within which we have to respond. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, SLA will assume we do not have any objection resistance yes. to this application. Yes. So we will move forward with that. So, um, one question if, with regards to if they're having small private events where the seating at tables in the main auditorium area. Then, if it's restricted to the lobby, they wouldn't be able to consume. No, we can't do that. We can't. I don't know the SLA rules. I don't think that we can restrict that if it's. The we no, I understand, but I made the motion. Which is the second. If they have tables in the lobby. In the auditorium, in the same auditorium areas, the seats are not fixed. The seats are movable. On the bit, the. They're refocable seats. Oh. Down here. Yes, in that area. Yeah. Okay, before the executive committee votes on this application, we have two uh, persons from our elected offices within the community who would like to address the executive committee. I will begin with Ms. Joanne Simon, district leader for the 52nd. I understand you would like to address the executive today. Well, thank you very much. I actually hadn't uh, known that I would have that opportunity. Um, I, I did want to say that I think that uh, uh, there has been a flurry of emails about this uh, application this week, and uh, a number of members of the community have expressed concern about um, the, the effects of a full liquor license at this location. Uh, not uh, uh, opposition to roulette. Uh, I think that people are on the whole very supportive of the organization coming to that space. And I think many people are very happy that that space, which is part of this big Y building, it's actually that corner space, um, which I think may be part of the confusion on your uh, map there, um, uh, is a very positive thing uh, for uh, the area. Uh, however, we have had experience with other organizations where despite the uh, the promises that have been made, sometimes there's noise, there's people on the street, there's people with alcohol. Um, many of the organizations have worked with us more uh, effectively than others. And obviously it's also, and this has nothing to do with Roulette's original application as far as I know, it's not far from what will be the Atlantic Yard site and the arena. And there is uh, right now a whole slew of applications for uh, liquor uses in and around the arena area, which of course affects the neighborhoods. And so people are just very concerned about that. 
Uh, people are concerned that uh, uh, the application to the State Liquor Authority have certain limitations with regard to um, what kind of alcohol is served and in, 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 in whether or not uh, uh, they will actually stick to promises about not serving alcohol after certain hours and that sort of thing. Some of it, I think, um, with deference to my uh, uh, the residents of the neighborhood, are concerns that are ones that are sort of unknowable, and I hate to sound like um, Dick Cheney, but <laughs> there's some things we don't know, and we don't know what we don't know, and you know, you understand that I really don't like, want to sound like Dick Cheney. Uh, but I think that that's given rise to a lot of concern, and so I think that if people, um, uh, we can address in a, in, a, in a constructive way people's concerns with regard to uh, the, the full-on liquor license, whether that's really needed, what that means, whether that can be restricted in some way so that it better meets the community's needs, because it is it's on Atlantic Avenue, but it's right actually in the middle of, of, of a neighborhood, and people have a lot of concerns about that. Um, so that was basically my commentary, and I appreciate your consideration in that regard. Thank you. Mr. Bolton? Um, With offices in the same building? Yeah, actually, we're on the second floor. <laughs> which, which floor might that be? Is that the real second floor, the yeah, mezzanine, the or the third floor? Uh, directly across the hall the is going to be our conference room, but that's what we call about the mezzanine level. Oh, okay. And it looks out, you know, this door to two steps down, dressing rooms, you look out over the balcony of the theater. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. But it is the second floor. Anyway, we've gotten lots of communications, as I know you have. They fall into a couple of categories. Uh, which you know Joanne talked about but we also got a question about process because generally when something like this is happening you're supposed to be putting up these notices in the area and they were noticeably absent so some people are having questions about that um, can I just talk to you there? Can you speak to what notices were posted? Where notice was? I was, I was getting the SLA that that's supposed to be when you file the application you have to file the application oh okay See, I like that. I can give an answer now. 500-foot uh, rule. You know, there are currently three establishments within 300 feet, not even 500 feet, that have full liquor licenses. So you guys are intending to file for a waiver on the 500-foot rule? Well, there is an exactly a waiver. We just list licenses within 500 feet. Yep. We go to the hearing that they have up there. Okay, well, it's a cause of concern among the public that there are already three, hundred, three establishments that have <coughs> full liquor licenses within mm -hmm. 300 feet of this establishment. And, you know, the 500 foot rule is there for a reason. And as Joanne mentioned, there's also the question about why, I heard your explanation, I still didn't understand why the need for a full liquor license, because if this is an artist organization, a not for profit, for an arts organization that will be doing the occasional uh, event, mm -hmm. it's very easy to get a one-off permit for the occasional event. Going for a full liquor license can put you in the category of being a catering hall that sometimes does artistic events, and that's where people's uh, concerns are. So I would submit that uh, your neighbors would be a lot more comfortable if you were going for a cabaret license. Well, we're not permitting we're, we're not a cabaret. We're, we're not dancing. It's, it's mostly listening. Mm -hmm. You know, you sit in, and you can see some pictures. We'll be sitting in chairs, comfortable chairs, focused on the stage. Um, so the dancing will be kept at a minimum. The in terms of in term, uh, the state liquor authority will grant a a venue a license. Now, if it's a beer and wine license, a caterer can't come in and file for a one-day permit because they will see that that establishment already has a license and they not will true. deny it. No. No. Not true. No, not true. I gotta stop you, not true. This I deal with that every every occasion I have at our hall, so don't use that. This is that was what I was informed and in no. speaking directly with the State Liquor Authority, that is what no. they told me. Well there are several people That's in this room who have day in, day out experience with that that is different. If you could find out who that is, who you spoke to, we'd love to talk to them. Because that's not the way the law is written. Will we bring that one employee in then? Does have to talk to them? Maybe that person was I, we we, are, we would be comfortable filing for a beer and wine permit oh, okay. 
But from what, all the information that I was told from my lawyers and from speaking directly with the state liquor authority, they will not grant the caterer a one-day permit if an establishment already has a license. That's that's that was what I've been told. A full, well, license. A full license. license. A full license. You have a full license. That's right. If you have a full license, they cannot do a permit for a special event. It has to be under your full license. But if you have anything other than a full license, they can apply for a one-day full license permit. But I think that, like I said, I, I was told something else. Okay. It involves a little bit more investigation. But at speaking with many different representatives, that was what I was, I was told. Our establishment would like to only serve beer and wine during our concerts. But for those occasional private events, sure. we need to have the flexibility so that we could offer you know, an alcohol. But well, respectfully, the cabaret license is not limited to beer and wine. Uh, you can ask for your cabaret license to be serving alcoholic beverages under the cabaret license. Is that interesting? But, but, but Mr. Wine Mr. Du, excuse me, sir. Yes, Mr. Harris. I, I believe the, the applicant is not asking for a cabaret license. And right. Um, uh, I suggest that that's not a can of worms to open up at this time. Well, okay, I'm just reporting the concerns of the community and it has been brought to me that they are looking at why they aren't going for a cabaret license because, as Joanne says, this community has had a great deal of experience with things changing on them, like quicksand. And for things to be given a possibility like that, they want to be reassured. What's the zone of Mr. Lassabecki first? Just, just a thing to interject here. <coughs> If the way they present it, this is going to be private events, then they don't need the cabaret license. Right. Cabaret license. Right. As long as you have private party, guests only, you're, it's a closed circle, not open to the public, you have music, you could have dancing, you could have alcohol, it's fine. And no one's being charged, yeah. Okay. But you open to the public, that's when they need the cabaret license. Right. The question here is they very carefully are stipulating private events. I'm just concerned that private events become promoters and promoters come. There are, this is a space for 660 people that usually always ex exceeds sometimes when you have a little party going on. That scares the heck out of me. That, that scares the community. As, as we are very much into controlling those numbers, having the security in force. We, any, any organization, any third party that wants to rent the space will have to be submit to contracts. We will have to have. All like those laws are broken. I understand that, but it's we are going to try. We're going to put those those procedures in place to make sure that those events don't become larger than they would. Now I now I have a question for what you just said. Are you saying that, Mr. Vogel? You, I'm sorry. Thank you, Ms. Patel. Someone has a question. Mr. Whiteside. Uh, I, I, I was just questioning the, the, the whole discussion around a cabaret license, which is not permitted in that district. Well, it's, why is it not permitted? It's permitted. Um, there was a suggestion that a cabaret license be applied for instead. I don't know that the State Liquor Authority has such a license, but generally speaking, those cabaret licenses issued by the Department of Consumer Affairs, not the State Liquor Authority. Right. 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 It's a, a, different zoning. a different animal, and as Mr. Whiteside points out, is right. only permissible in certain zoning districts, uh, which does not include this one. Mr. Varela. Does anyone know what type of license they have? They have an on-premises license. They have an OP license, an on-premises license. Thank you, Mr. Du. Um, I, I, I'm, I appreciate the applicant's um, honesty in that. I do know that they have a full on-premises, and I do know because I've been around the bush with this um, liquor license thing for some time, that one time when they came before the Health and Environment and Social Service Committee, um, this very issue about certain impacts on the community and how the, li how the license would work out in reality um, caused me earlier on during this applicant's testimony and, and this um, venue tonight to suggest that the liquor be consumed in a particular location and it seemed to me without having Mr. Whiteside's command of what floor and what you call it and what the space is and the square footage that it be um, 
similarly to BAM, be confined to the lobby because I think that would go a long way to um, quelling some of the fears of some of the people who have testified tonight and some who have not. All right, so. Who owns the motion? I own the motion. Yeah. Okay, so you're making I mean, a friendly a amendment to your own motion. I mean, I yes, I am. Yes, sir. Ms. Janet. I was wondering, uh, with the residents, many of whom are kind of a frail population in the YWCA, what agreements or protections are there for the residents of the YWCA above you? What kind of contracts or agreements are in the standards you have with the Y? The Y is in full support. Um, you know, we've been in very much a discussion with you know, Martha Camber about this. The people that will be attending the events will be the ones that will be have access to the, to the bar or the alcohol or the beer, whatever it is. So it's not we're not going to have a public bar. You know, we have are stipulated by the by the YWCA that you know all all the operations have to be closed by 12 p.m., 11 p.m. on, on Sundays. You know, it was a nine-month discussion about how to formulate this so it would protect the best interests of, of the, the residents as well as so we can conduct our, our activities as well. And so they are, like I said, they have been very much in support of us throughout this entire process. And I might add, there's also soundproofing that's included included in the lease yeah, for the ceiling. Some, some yeah, we went through an extensive process of six months of soundproofing uh, all above and making sure that we made sure that no nobody was loitering outside of the premises, having security outside as soon as after after the event was over, um, you know, trying to do our best to defray everybody not to have Mr. The Gordon, affected. Yeah, just to point out, uh, when you refer to the terrible person in the lobby, I presume this will be the lobby of the actual theater itself for the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 As opposed to the, the lobby, lobby of the Y. Of the y yes, the itself. lobby of the theater itself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. So they have to show their tickets. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Varela, would it be possible for you to read back the motion that's on the floor? No. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> Mr. Du, thank you. Okay, I make a motion uh, that this body recommend to the State Liquor Authority the approval of its application for a full on-premise liquor license that, that within the recommendation to the State Liquor Authority, the um, community board clearly state in its letter that it's recommending that the serving and the consumption of alcohol be limited to the lobby of the establishment that's before us, known as roulette intermediate. Is there a second? Ms. Saunders. Discussion. Mr. Um, I just want to propose again to just for the applicant to just look into you know what the rules are on in terms of being able to bring drinks into the seats. I think you know it's something that happens in Manhattan. I, you know I I don't know theaters in Brooklyn that where this happens, but it's it's something that does happen in the city, and it would be interesting just to find out whether or not it's legal. Here. Mr. Varela, I would also like to echo what Mr. Conoscenti said and add to. Uh, or I guess the other side of the Rock of Ages argument that Mr. Carlton, Mr. Gordon made, uh, made earlier is that um, I haven't seen any musicals recently, but I saw the importance of being earnest this summer. And there was uh, an older lady sitting next to me wearing pearls and drinking a gin and tonic. It's fence? happening and not just at the Rockish shows. So. <laughs> <laughs> the the floor is closed for commentary except from uh, executive committee members. Is there any other executive committee member who would like to comment before we vote on this vote? <coughs> Question is called. Mr. Harrison, thank you for repeating your motion thank in you, the most Duke. eloquent manner. Uh, all in favor of the motion on the floor, please raise your hand. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Conoscenti, Mr. Whiteside, Mr. Varela, abstention. The motion uh, failed. Two. Uh, motion failed. Uh, 
motion doesn't fail. The motion failed. Motion fails. Sorry, ladies. Yeah. Since the motion failed to carry, do we need another motion? Can we make a no? We motion? have the motion already set from the committee that if the motion fails, uh, it's automatic. We don't. We don't have to go through a motion. We don't. We don't give a support. No. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Whiteside. Before we move on, I think that we did a disservice to let. Let's deal with that later on. Okay. All right. All right. As long as we can return to this. Because, uh, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. Other business. Um, Mr. Varela. Well, I, I was just going to remind you of. Uh, or what Mr. White said earlier about the vote on the yeah, um, of course they can correct me if I'm wrong, but I had the sense that those of us who did not vote for John's motion, it wasn't because we did not want to vote for the um, the um, applicant. Yeah, the roulette. It was that we didn't like his motion, and we thought we'd get a chance to do another motion, and then we weren't really voting against. We left by uh, not voting with uh, John. That's, That's why I said I felt that they had gotten a disservice. Make another motion. Because it was misunderstood. I'd like to make a motion to approve the liquor license for roulette. Uh, with I think with the caveat that they just look into what the the SLA regulations are for drinks in and out of the theater. Question. Mr. Lassenberg. What about the liquor license I that second in that open space, which is what the community was a little bit Sir. concerned about? Is there what you The community had a concern about full liquor license in that open space for public events, not necessarily the, the two, you know, they, I think the theater was doing a disservice it's for itself by lumping both things together. I understand what you're saying about the drinks to the seats and all, and that could be checked out by SLA. But the objection of the community had been to that private event space on the lobby floor there. Not the lobby floor, the whole master place. And what's the purpose? They themselves said that they would want wine and beer, but something is pushing them to ask for full liquor, and it is for this private party event space. Yeah. And now them not being here, I don't feel comfortable to discuss this anymore. Yeah. Because you know, I really would love to pursue that further with them, and even you know, some of the public. Come back in the fall. And since they haven't applied for the application yet, with the state, right. with the state, so. They have another room. Um, they have another. Out. They have another shot. Well, let's invite them back. Okay, a motion has been made by Mr. Conasetti, I believe, seconded by Mr. Whiteside. Additional discussion. Um, Ms. Shatter, I, I think I would recommend tabling it only because they are going to have to come back to us when they file the recommendation. Better come back to my committee. Deal with it. Come back to your Motion to Mark, wait, 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 wait. I think a statement has been made that's not uh, that, That's true. That's not true. Okay. Don't have to come back last No, they... They don't have to. Tonight's appearance was their scheduled appearance pursuant to the 30-day notification. They did not come back again. No, Once the 30 days have elapsed, they are able to file an application. Oh. Um, okay. So, Ms. Chatter, you withdraw your motion to take it. No. Motion has been made by Mr. Conasenti and seconded by Mr. Whiteside. Is there any additional discussion? Mr. Gordon. I'll just point out, I used to live at Atlantic <coughs> by third, so I went across from the one stage later. I think there was an 
there was some concern, as expressed by Joanne Simon, about the activities at, the, at that corner where the, uh, so it's, an audit, it's an auditorium, you know, it's the old auditorium of the YWCA. And what happened, I think, the concern was that prior, not with these people, but under the wise management, they used to let the space out to whoever right. came along. And there were some boisterous parties yeah. that happened at that space. I think, and having lived there, the concern was over the boisterous parties and things that did happen. My feeling was, given that what Brooklyn seems to want to do, that they would have it under control and that they would have a uh, far more uh, disciplined aspect to it. And they're, pre they're presenting actual activities, actual shows, as opposed to just the parties that they used to have at the Y and the auditorium, which were just for people having to dance and drink. So I think that's what Joy and Simon was you know, concerned about. I don't want to make this even more any longer, but I, I, I don't know if I agree with you, Colton. I'm, I'm concerned that the young ladies who showed up didn't have a clear sort of idea of what they were going to do about renting it to other people. I understand what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing about bringing alcohol to the seats, you know, that doesn't bother me so much because they'll figure it out with SLA and they'll do whatever the thing is for them to do. But the idea that they're going to rent it out to who they're, who, and they, they weren't clear about it. And the fact they didn't understand that they could get a one day special waiver for a full mm -hmm. license, like, bugged me because they either were pretending that they didn't, didn't know. under, know or they were or they didn't know which is also a problem like both of those things are a problem for me personally yeah. so i feel like they didn't have the answer to who was going to come in what they're going to do is great but what are they going to what's going to happen when they rent this out to other mm -hmm. whether it's a concert promoter or for somebody for a party that you know that's gonna we you know there wasn't enough information so that was the concern i think that like wasn't clarified and like you understand they're not they answer it. Right. And I don't know if they had the answer. So that's, Why did you don't need to believe it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Harris. John, thank you. So, Emily, is what you're saying they were either lying or they were ignorant? Um, they were not being clear or they were ignorant. Well, I don't know. You know, they said we'll have contracts with yeah. the people that we rented out contracts. Yeah. And the contracts so what does that state mean? what you can do, what you can so have a contract. Yeah, but okay, and then you have a contract, and what happens? So the people violate the contract. Then unknown. Well, it's sorry. unknown. Okay, that's my problem. Mr. Varela, you had a flashback, right? Um, <laughs> well, just to that point, I, I guess the third option is they were lying or they were ignorant or they were misled, which okay, is what they were claiming. That's fine. Because it well, seems they that they asked but they, they, well, but no, but they asked the appropriate person, they said at SLA, and the SLA they person told them something. Did. Right. right. But they didn't yeah, say who the person was. They couldn't say who the person was when we questioned them. Right. But I don't know. And again, I wanted to, to go back to the thing is they I think they made a disservice to themselves because they needed this, the wine and beer is a great thing. It's mm -hmm. every theater doing right. their but they themselves, for other events, for private events, they're doing this. And they have absolutely no clue what this private event could be, right. how That's bad right. it could That's be. It. And once you open the Pandora's box, you don't stop this. It's not like, oh, okay, we issued the liquor license, but the neighborhood is screaming. It's not going to be, well, you know, they made a mistake, they can't control it. We've had a few liquor license applications or renewals in, in right that neck of the woods with locations that have been crying with problems in mm -hmm. backyards mm -hmm. and noises coming out of establishments. And it's all around the same place. Mm -hmm. and, and yet we're saying, this is 600 seats. Have you people ever seen what yeah. Webster Hall looks like for private parties? Yeah. I mean, the neighborhood is dying. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly, exactly the same thing. Now. A private party, a promoter comes in, rents the space, over. Mm -hmm. You know, dangerous. Mr. Burrell. Uh, Andrew, I told you to your point because we're talking, you're thinking of Third Ave, or Brooklyn Pub, which we went through right across the street, and that is a concern. I guess I misunderstood the presentation. I thought it was going to be like when they have their 
donor parties no, and those sorts of things. I didn't, I didn't get the, in, the impression that they were going to be renting it out. No, I think, they, I think they said they were going to be renting it out. Like they were going to be renting it out. And that's money. the reason they wanted the full yeah, liquor license, so service. that they could rent so they it out. Rent it so out. catering to people mm -hmm. could come in and serve liquor. Right. Mr. Harris. Thank you, John. Um, as unpopular as my motion may have been with some of my colleagues, mm -hmm. that is why I crafted it the way mm -hmm. I did, and that is why I presented it in spite of some of the um, opposing thought on members of the board, which I, both the members and their thought I respect, but um, I am not, I'm not senior enough that I, that I, I have forgotten um, some of the discussion around this that came up when um, BAM wanted to lick a license. Thank you. Motion Bam. has been made and properly seconded. Mr. Harrison, I believe you made the motion. No, sir. No, I did not. Mr. Connell, I'm sorry. Can you repeat it? Sure. Uh, it was really just to uh, approve the liquor license uh, with the caveat that uh, they just go to this, the SLA and just find out whether or not, clarify the drink situation that we were debating. I, I think uh, most of us are in agreement, it, it see, at least from the vote, I think at least on, on this side, we were very supportive of the of the application. It was just that we, you know, we were debating whether or not the drink should be really within in the space or in the lobby, and that was really something that should be determined by SLA, not not the board. Are there any other points of clarification on Mr. Calasetti's motion? Yes, Mr. Du, thank you. It is always the purview of the board to try to support the community in a manner in which they find. Uh, a compromise and find a condition in the sale and the consumption of alcohol most palatable to all parties. Therefore, I respectfully disagree with the opinion just put out by my colleague to my immediate left because it has come up numerous times in committee, has it not, Madam Chair? Exactly. Thank you. Mr. Duke. Are there any comments? No more. Hearing none? No. Oh, oh. Go ahead. The new motion still does not address this issue about unknown people running parties and liquor. They Absolutely. don't seem to know who's coming in there. That's Absolutely. the problem. Absolutely. Let's find who they're renting to. I don't know. Absolutely. And the, the motion just does not address that at all. Absolutely. Okay. Well, yeah. Noted. With the Morello. With the, uh, I mean, I guess I'm just curious as to what they would have needed to present to answer that question. Does that address a list of the next two no. Do those things, do those things, no. we know them that far in advance? No. Or what could we stipulate? Aren't they an existing organization? They are. They're so they're 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 they have already. rented to people in the past. I mean, they could have come right. in and said, this is what we're doing, and this is what we're going to continue right. to do. Did they didn't seem to have that answer. They were right. too vague on what they were talking vague. about. They were too vague on what they were talking about. They didn't really, you know, come across to me as the is that this is the plan that we're going to do. Absolutely. Mr. Not, Chair, if I might. Mr. Whiteside, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I, I was just wondering whether or not this might be, uh, you know, a thing of, uh, you know, these were two very young people. And, you know, yeah, maybe there uh, seems there's a lack of confidence in youth. I don't know. I mean, but young people are doing things all the time well, and making funny. money and having successes and everything, just like older people. Why don't you experiment and put the right in front of me? Mr. Harrison. Mr. Du, um, regardless of any of the demographics of the, of the individuals who came before us to present on this application of State Liquor Authority, it is clear to at least this board member that 90% of the presentation was about um, the content uh, and the good work of that organization, 5% was on the presentation that they were actually going before the State Liquor Authority to ask for a liquor license, and 5% was on a perceived lack of understanding of certain specifics to that liquor license. Uh, if I may. Yes, I mean, I'm not familiar with the organization at all, but if they have a good reputation as an organization, that should stand for them in terms of the choices that they would make. If they have a good reputation. Ms. Janner. 
I'm saying they have a great reputation on who they've had. I've mean, heard most of these things. But I don't know if they've been operating the same way where they are, since it was a smaller space. This they did not bring out. Well, this is what we did and what have you. They seem to know they just couldn't couldn't get enough detail for me to feel comfortable with them. As far as that that part of it. I don't know if they were doing that at their other space. Now, what, if I may just, just, like, uh, just respond. Um, no, what, what I'm trying to say is if they have had a good reputation in the past, it would seem to me that the choices that they would make would be based <laughs> on trying to maintain this reputation. And therefore, they would be judicious in the kinds of things they would choose to do. I, I mean, there's no way for us to know everything that they're going to do, but if, a, if an organization has a history, and the history is good, and they have a good reputation, you, you must assume that they're not going to just throw that out the window. And we can't assume anything because they, they didn't, didn't say that when they, we asked the question. Exactly. They didn't say, they didn't say what? Mr. Chair. I don't, Mr. Harris, no call the here. question. Please. Question is being called. <laughs> Mr. Conoscenti. Yes. One last time. Sure. <laughs> so that we all understand what it is that okay. we are voting on. Okay. Can you please? remind us of the motion you put on the board. Sure. Uh, simply put, it's just to approve the application. Uh, there was a, because there was a misunderstanding, I had a misunderstanding about the process before. And uh, the caveat was just that they would just check with the State Liquor Authority as to whether or not drinks could spill over from the lobby into the theater. As my, I was my Mr. Whiteside, you seconded I second. that motion. Yes. Mr. Varela, you were raising your hand. Oh, no, I'm done. <laughs> the motion has been made and properly seconded. All in favor of the motion on the floor. And I'm going to be consistent. More in favor. Opposed. Two, three, four opposed. Four opposed. Abstentions. There's anybody left. No. There is no one left to abstain unless we wish to defer to the media or the people sitting there. <laughs> I was just looking at Mr. Gordon. Thank you for reminding me. He is uh, a co-chair as well. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mr. Varela. Can I make a suggestion that we revert to the motion that was put forth when they were here? Because that had the majority approval. No, so it, we just no, no, it did not. No. The motion no. failed. It, did, it didn't pass because the three of us didn't understand. If we had known that it was that or nothing, we would have supported that motion. Well, well, that's yeah, why we wanted to nothing. We, yeah. we, you know, <laughs> Mr. Barrow, thank you, Mr. Do. Unless I misunderstand, and I'm certain yourself and the district manager will, um, in the absence of our 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 favorite lawyer for um, decorum on Robert's Rules of Order, I believe this motion failed. Yes. This is the second failure of a motion on this. I think it is mm -hmm. clear that there is not a consensus by this executive committee to send a letter to the State Liquor Authority in favor of this applicant's application for a liquor license. Very well said.